Everyone's different here at the Canopy Workspace, different organisations, projects and specialisms. But here inside the Entopia building, there's also a common goal that brings us together. There's a collective desire to accelerate change and sustainability is at the heart of it. The Canopy is all about collaboration, a community sharing and learning from each other's experiences. And this is Canopy Connect, a podcast where you can get to know your fellow members at the Canopy. This time on the podcast. My name is Helen Jackson and I'm Director of Climate Node. So, let's connect. I have been working in climate and environmentally related areas for about 20 years now. So, a long time ago, I started life as a physicist. I started a PhD in atmospheric physics and I decided academia wasn't for me. But that was my kind of um, introduction to, to climate related matters. I then took that on to working in consultancy. So I worked for three different consultancy, all involved in various ways in researching environmental policy, climate economics, climate finance, and so on. I worked for a company called Vivid Economics, which set out to be a world leading consultancy in climate and energy economics and policy and achieved that. I worked in the early days when we were getting started. It was very intense and they are now part of McKinsey. That's my background. 20 years of experience in this space, a mixture of both physical science background, environmental economics background, as well as data and coding as well. So I was working with an organisation called the Climate Bonds Initiative. And they, their purpose is to come up with methodologies for flagging bonds that are linked to projects which are low carbon and climate resilient. And we were working on trying to flag whether hydropower projects were, were climate resilient. And that process took a very long time and it made me realise how complicated these matters are. And it made me realise how much context there is, how much context specific to local geography there is in determining whether an asset is you know particularly at risk from climate change so I began thinking okay there's a lot of people out there working with climate models working on quantifying what will happen to specific kind of meteorological variables like precipitation and temperature and so on and are we missing a lot of this finer grained kind of localized context when we are talking about climate risk and I began to think okay so how would you even begin to to gather this kind of more localized context specific information and I thought, OK, well, a lot of it is contained in scientific papers, reports, maybe even newspaper articles. So how would you begin to efficiently compile and organise that information? And that was how Climate Node started. And as part of that process, I've been, of course, looking very closely at natural language processing, which is the branch of AI, which deals with um, getting computers to understand human language. And so... Although Climate Node describes itself as an organisation which is using data science in general, it is very, very heavily focused at the moment on natural language processing, and that's a, a fascinating topic. And most recently, I've been working on a project to derive uh, historic data for surface water flood events in England. So this is when you get flooding, not because of the places are near a river that's burst its banks or they're not near the sea, it's just the sheer amount of rainfall that falls in a short space of time overwhelms the, the drainage system. And this is a growing problem in the UK. People may remember there's both quite serious flash flood events that happened in London in 2021. But we have very, very little historic data on it because these, these events are often quite localised and they're over quite quickly. So it's, it's actually difficult to get data on them. So I worked on a project to compile information on these events from newspaper reports to also detect them from newspaper reports. And that project's now over, but it's been quite intensive work. And if people are interested, they can look on Climate Node's website, climatenode.org. And then there's a page called Maps, and then you can go to, to see that, the results of that particular project. I think success for me it looks like people really using the data that results from the project and using that, in, well, particularly in scientific research. So one of the uses for the urban flash flood project I've just been talking about could be in validating flood forecasts. I've had some discussions with people from the Met Office about that. If they take the data set that I've got and use that to validate flood forecasts, I'd be absolutely delighted. Another use might be people who are modelling surface water flooding, if they could then use those results to, to validate their models. So I think success for me, it really looks like doing something useful with that data 
which helps us as a society adapt to the changes that we're seeing. I have been working at home for a very long time. So, you know, even when I was working full time for Vivid Economics, I was working at home and that was 13 years ago. So for me, it's an absolute blessing to be able to just come into a physical building and interact with people, frankly. (laughs) Second, there's the the network, obviously. You know, there's a great opportunity to go and and meet lots of people in both the Canopy Network and the CISL Network. And a third, I think it's just the, the... the chance encounter that comes with just bumping into people, you know, going to events and talking to people and just being able to bounce ideas off people and and know what they're doing and, you know, maybe some potential collaboration or just, you know, validation even of what you're doing comes from that. So I think it's really valuable. People are very welcome to email me. So it's helen at climatenode.org. You can visit Climate Node's website, www.climatenode.org. I am here two days a week. I'm normally in Workspace 3. Monday tends to be the day you're most likely to find me. The other days are somewhat more variable. But if anyone wants to have a chat, just get in touch. I'm aware that, you know, if I want climate node to be a success, then one day I might be employing people, managing people. If anybody wants to give me some hints on how I even go about starting doing that, then I would gratefully receive them because otherwise I'm just going to have to make it up as I go along. (laughs) Thanks for checking out this episode of Canopy Connect. Log in to your office R&D profile to connect with your Canopy neighbours. Just head to the members page and find them. This is a Canopy podcast made by New Allotment. The Canopy is part of Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, supported by the European Regional Development Fund. Thank you for listening.